pleasure being here. My name is Jim. I come from New Orleans, Louisiana. How many people are here from New Orleans? <laughs> okay, how many people are here? Let's hear that. That's really because of the spotlight. I can't see. I can only hear you out there. For those of you who do not recognize me, I've been on all the major programs in the United States. Welfare, unemployment, food <laughs> stamps. Just to name a few. It's a Now, you know a little bit about me, and I'd like to find out just a little about you. I'd like to do just a little bit of a survey. If we could have some house lights so I could see these wonderful people. Oh, there you are. Let's find out something interesting about you as an audience. Just a, just a show of hands. Uh, um, how many happily married people are here? Raise your hands if you're happily married. Half couples are looking at each other, going, are we happy? I don't know. I said happily, not halfway up there in the balcony. Okay, how many people have been married more than 10 years? More than 10 years of marriage? More than 10, more, now wait a second, we got hands going up that didn't go up on the happy part. <laughs> more than 20 years? More than 30 years? More than 40 years of marriage? Oh, we have to go for the gold. More than 50 years of marriage? We got a few over there, give a round of applause over there, and right there in the second row. Find out the real truth. How many people feel like you've been married more than 50 years? Raise your hand. Now, wait, wait a sec. I do not believe that. My father once told me that a man is not complete until he gets married. And then he's finished. I'd like to do a tune for everybody who's been married more than 20 years. A very appropriate tune entitled, Please Release Me, Let Me Go. That's a joke. So for more than 20 years, there's only one appropriate tune, and here it is. Once in a while. <laughs> Would you believe it's impossible? No. A tune you can all sing along to. A tune entitled, Let Me Call You Sweetheart, Because I've Called You Everything Else. Here we go. for me because I'm not married. <laughs> now I can marry any girl I please. I just haven't pleased any of you. And now I'm at that awkward age. I'm too old to be a gigolo and too young to be a greeter at Walmart. <laughs> I guess I should explain why I never got married. Every time I met a girl I liked, I'd bring her home to meet my mother. No matter what, my mother would not approve of her. She didn't look right, didn't talk right, didn't act right, didn't dress right, didn't cook right. Nothing was right. Finally, I met a girl that looked like my mother. She talked like my mother, acted like my mother, dressed like my mother, even cooked like my mother. My father couldn't stand her. <laughs> now I'm sure many of you are aware that the banjo is considered by many historians to be one of the few original American instruments, and I'm quite proud to say that I've helped make it what it is today. Obsolete. <laughs> And although it's an American instrument, actually there are many wonderful banjo players all around the world. I've heard great banjo players in Canada, in England, Australia, Japan, even in Jamaica. So I thought throughout this evening's show we should do some international music for you. And since we happen to be on our way to Australia, I thought something Spanish would be appropriate. <laughs> banjo for about, about 25 years now, and when I began playing the instrument, I did not begin playing on a beautiful cruise ship like this one in front of a wonderful audience like yourself. Like every musician, I began by playing privately in my own bedroom where I would drive with friends and family to come in to listen to me. But after a while, I wanted to play for the public. It's not an easy thing to do when you begin, so I did what every musician does. I volunteered my time and played anywhere they would let me. I remember I used to play at, at hospitals and at nursing homes. One day I was playing in a hospital, I guess I'd been playing for about an hour. I looked up at this gentleman and I said, 
I hope you get better soon. And he looked at me and he said, I hope you do too. <laughs> Twenties tune or a Spanish tune or a riverboat tune, but I gotta tell you, one of my favorite types of music happens to be Broadway show tunes. Do you like Broadway shows? Oh good. Just, just yell out your favorite show so I know what you like. South Pacific. South Pacific, anything else? Chicago. Chicago. Fiddler on the Roof. Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Phantom of the Opera. Wow, what a show! And so much banjo music, I wouldn't know where to get. I heard two different people yell out Oklahoma. You like that show? I tell you what, tonight we're going to do for you the entire musical score to Oklahoma. It takes two and a half hours, don't plan on making the buffet. No, we're going to do the Reader's Digest condensed version. And for those of you who wanted South Pacific, Chicago, the, the Vita Music Man, and Phantom of the Opera. This has a lot of the same notes in it as those shows. <laughs> play what's known as a tenor or a four-string banjo, and unfortunately, bluegrass sounds more like, well, like crabgrass, actually. <laughs> but there is one tune I can do for you that was featured in a motion picture about 35 years ago that starred Burt Reynolds and John Voight. How many people would like to hear dueling banjos with people? Okay, how many people realize it takes two banjos to play dueling? All right, here it is, dueling banjos from the movie Belligerence. Uh, delivery. <laughs> No cover, no minimum. <laughs> now we're going to do this for real. I'm going to be ably assisted by our wonderful musical director, James, who will be playing the other half of dueling banjos on the 88 string black upright banjo. <laughs> for those of you who saw the movie, he's the one who drools. Nine. <laughs> 